Megan. I'm Liz, and welcome back to Noted. Um, today we're doing a little bit more of a personal episode. Um, we're going to start off with like just talking about our week. <laughs> yes, this whole podcast we went into it kind of not really knowing what to expect. Kind of we wanted to do a lot of industry stuff, but we've been getting a lot of DMs asking for some personal stuff as well. So we're going to do um more of a personal episode and we're gonna start every episode with a kind of what's going on segment I guess you could call it yeah so Megan what's what's your week been like um well I mean obviously this Helene Hurricane Helene stuff has been crazy and our thoughts and prayers are with everybody who is being affected by that because that storm was a monster and it is a monster we're getting rain from it here in memphis right now currently yeah it's crazy yeah um that that has been we're well you're mostly a weather nerd but like it's like seeped on to me and now i'm a weather nerd and i feel like i've just been like checking that hurricane app over and over and over it was pretty crazy so obviously that was one part um i showed up to my Botox appointment on Wednesday when my appointment was on Friday. Mm, yeah. Um, that was humbling. Mm. They were really nice about it. They said that I was the third person that had done that this week. That feels like a glitch in their system to me. That, but I was also like, did you guys just say that to make me feel better? <laughs> no, it sounds like there was a glitch in their system. Yeah. And maybe the problem is them. Yeah. And not you. Thank you for saying that because I've never done that before in my life. I don't know just how it feels. But I got the Botox and I'm feeling beautiful and smooth. (laughs) Even though it hasn't kicked in yet. No, but the mental aspect is there. I would say I'm jealous, but it's like on me that I'm not getting Botox. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, as as everyone is painfully aware, I am trying to have a baby. And um, (laughs) I don't know. I feel like it's fine if you get Botox when you're like trying to conceive. But like, I don't know. Something I'm like, okay, I'm not doing freaking like, I'm not eating out of like plastic, but I can like get Botox. Like, no, like two things cannot be true. So I'm like, you got to just like stick to it and be, if you're going to be crazy, like be crazy. So that's where I am. You're committed. I'm committed. Yeah. I'm committed to being like non-toxic, even though... It doesn't matter. Okay, what about you, Liz? How's your week been? Um, let's see. Um, Dancing with the Stars is really in the forefront. It's (laughs) Dancing with the Stars and baths are your life right now. Yeah. Yes. Actually, the only night that I don't take a bath is when I want to watch Dancing with the Stars. You know, maybe Um, you should do them both at the same time. I don't know what would happen. I don't know either. I I would be so happy. No, I can't because Weston started watching it with me. Oh, okay. That's too um, bad. But yeah, Dancing with the Stars. I did have to miss it live this week because we had book club. Oh. Oh. That's Margot. She's saying, hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I want to chat with the girl. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Dancing with the Stars. I really want to talk about it. Please talk about it. I love Pummel Horse Guy. No, he's my favorite. He's <laughs> so sweet. And like, the t- I'm on Pummel Horse Guy TikTok. Steve, Steven Nederazek, Net- I think is how you say his name. I love him and I love his partner, Riley. Um, she was paired with, do you know who that guy is? Harry um, Jowsey. Do you know who that is? Yeah, the guy that um, was on Too Hot to Handle. Yes. So, yeah. you know, rumors were that like, you know, he was trying to kick it to her last season and he was so bad at dancing and like he like broke her heart and blah 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 that's like the rumor and now that she's paired with Steven it's like her redemption season and like she's like she's like she got an eight for the first time and she was like I've never gotten an eight before I know it was it was so sweet and I just I I, I'm sick I can't get enough of Dancing (laughs) with the Stars like it's all over my TikTok um the first episode that she watched she texted me and she said I think I'm going to cry because I'm so happy from watching Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, no, I, and I did. I I cried that episode. I cried the next episode. Like, I just sit there and cry because I'm just so happy for them. (laughs) You know, it's like, I don't know them, but it's like, it's it's out of their comfort zone and they're working so hard. I love Anna Delvey, man. (sighs) I know. I'm so, I'm actually really bummed she got kicked off because like her lack of caring. Yeah. Was so entertaining to me. No, I know. I I'm I'm sad and and so her pro his name is Ezra yeah it was his first season as a pro oh so yeah everybody's kind of like dang Ezra got kind of like 
that's not fair. You well, know, there's cause... nowhere to go but up for him now. I know. So. <laughs> I know. Um, so, yeah, Dancing with the Stars. That's been big for me. Um, I'm reading JoJo's book. Oh, you are? I've seen yeah. some of the snippets on Instagram, and it looks, like, very interesting. Like, the whole speculated Christina Aguilera interaction. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm so excited. Ooh. But I, it's just interesting, you know, for us and, like, t- on this podcast, like, yeah. what we talk about. Like, she talks about how um, Leave, she had recorded, and she was like, whatever, I didn't really like it. Like, it was fine. And appa- apparently all of the other stuff she had recorded was really, like, more R- R&B. Oh. And um, this was, like, the most pop, you know, Disney, quote-unquote, yeah. sounding. And her label was like, no, this has to be the single because it has to, you know, be on radio or whatever. And she was talking about how she went on radio tour and how she hit, like, 15 cities in three weeks. And I was like, well, mm-hmm. if you listen to our first podcast episode, <laughs> like, that's pretty standard. But she was 13 that's when she was wild. doing that. And, and she actually said that um, – when they sent out the CD, so this was back in, I mean, what, 2000? Yeah, so there were CDs. 2005, something like that, when that came out. Yeah, that sounds um, right. They said they sent out the CDs without a picture of her on the front because they, like, didn't want the label or the radio people to be, um, you know, discouraged or skewed in any way by her age or what she looked like because she sounds so much older. She really does, though. And it worked because, like, radio stations were playing it and stuff. And then eventually, like, when it got traction is when she went on the road for it and stuff. But isn't that interesting? That's crazy. I did I know. not know that. Yeah. So it's just full of, like, really fun stuff like that so far. But I'm very interested to get to the Christina Aguilera of it all. Yeah. I really, I mean, I feel like that's not the first time we've heard Christina Aguilera drama, like, no. on the internet. Other No, have in- you heard the um, drama about how... Her, how stripped, have I told you this before? I don't know, maybe. maybe. Okay, so (laughs) how stripped apparently was supposed to be an album for Pink, because it was the the writer, who's the writer, I cannot think of her name, Um, but she wrote, you know, Beautiful, she wrote all of like Christina's big hits on Stripped, apparently that whole record was like already pretty much written and it was supposed to be pinks and then this is all lore this is please like this is all alleged um then apparently christina started hooking up with that writer yes oh was this on beyond the blinds it was probably on beyond the blinds yeah i think you made me listen to that episode oh you did you made me listen to that whole episode if you've not listened to the episode of beyond the blinds with christina aguilera it is it's wild yeah uh I was not at all prepared. Yeah, no. Um, gosh, it's really bothering me that I cannot remember the writer's name. It's like a huge female writer. But anyways, so yeah, so that's the lore about Christina Aguilera. And also, she's wearing full mesh bodysuits right now. What? <laughs> she's wearing like bodysuits, <laughs> like that cover. You know how like Dolly Parton has like mesh yeah. over her hands? Have yeah, you yeah, seen yeah, that? yeah. So apparently. Christina Aguilera is doing that now. So when you see a video of her with like gloves, you know, like yeah. full length gloves, if you look at like her upper arm, it's like a mesh bodysuit. Like if you're seeing any part of her skin, it's like a mesh bodysuit. Just because she's like insecure or something? Like she yeah. wants to make her skin look better? Because she wants to make her skin look like younger. Because, yeah. Because, and she also like lost all that weight. So it's like, you know, oh. maybe she's recovering from like uh, excess skin removal surgery. Like, listen, I don't know. I, I don't know, but like this is what comes up on my TikTok feed, and like now, and now I can't unsee it, and now you can't unsee for it for you, Paige. For me, um, Christina Aguilera wearing full mesh bodysuits. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about. Um, mm. I believe it for her. Oh, for so, sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, what else is happening? I got kicked out of my therapist's office. <laughs> Not really. Um, you got um. I got booted from you got my therapist. Moved to a different class. Yeah, I got I graduated from my therapist um because she <laughs> she, she was like you're too you're too messed up for me. No. I got I got to refer you to someone else in this <laughs> office because I can't handle you. No, no. That's, that's that's not really what happened, but it at the same time it is entirely it is, what happened. Yeah. 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 Um so I'm starting EMDR therapy. Yeah, girl. Um, because I have trauma from. Yeah, we've we've had a traumatic year. Yeah, from my year. So um, that happened this morning. That was super fun. 
Yeah, she uh, walks in to my kitchen today and she goes, guess what? My therapist said, with peace and love, I can't work with you anymore. <laughs> and I was like, what? She did. She did. <laughs> no, she, she's, she was really nice about it. And it's all like in effort to help me feel better yeah. quicker. So it's it's fine. But I was, I was at the time like, oh, she's, she's giving me the, it's not you, it's me. Kind of. You know. Um, so, you know, just another step in my healing journey. Um, yeah, yeah, we're on the way. We're on the way. It's fun. It's just another day of me trying to convince you to watch Tell Me Lies because it's so good. I tried, man. I tried. And like that first season, I was just like, it's so much like, (laughs) (laughs) I want to keep this podcast clean, but it's so much like... (laughs) adult physical adult activity, physical activity <laughs> truly that i'm like i was like is there a story here like and i just i don't think the lead guy is at that like is that hot no he's not but he he's he's an enemy like you don't want him to be hot because he sucks but i don't know i mean i agree i think anybody who watches the show it's like nothing happens the whole show but everything happens the whole show i can't tell you the the overarching story of the show like I really can't tell you other than wow this. sounds so good no but it's like the characters are so well developed and you're just you feel like you're living in these people's lives and that's why it's so good but I, I I tried like I really gave it a shot I think I watched like a few episodes of that first season and I was like well the second season's better I will say that <sighs> I think Ugh. anyway but I don't know I think how about try it again how about this I'll watch tell Tell me lies if you watch Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Man, those could not be more different. <laughs> I'm begging for, I, I keep begging mom to watch it too, and she won't. I'm like, mom, please watch Dancing with the Stars. She's like, okay, and she just won't. Like, nobody watches Dancing with the Stars but me. Is it on Tuesdays? It's on Tuesday nights, but then they just like, you can stream it the next day on okay. Hulu. Okay. I'll, next week, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Oh God, that means I gotta watch Tell Me Lies. Oh, it's I'm gonna watch the whole first season. I'm telling you, you'll get to a point where you'll be hooked. <sighs> like I binge watched the whole first season in like three days. Okay. Because you get hooked. Okay. Well, maybe we'll watch it tonight because it is to be noted that to be noted. <laughs> um, to be noted that I have moved in this weekend. Yes. I'm. I am a resident of the McKay household this weekend because my husband is um, at the Georgia-Alabama game. Yes. And I don't like staying alone at my house. Honestly, I don't think there is a single female who does. Yeah. So I have the luxury mm-hmm. of your guest room. Yes. And full access full to Full access Margo. to my beautiful niece. <laughs> I can see her whenever I want. I can pick her up and cuddle her. Yes. At you know whenever I want. I don't have to like look at pictures yep. um on my phone yep. at night. I yep. can just like be there. Yeah. So I said, "Yes, I will move in for the weekend." So, yeah. Yeah, so we can watch we can watch something else. We don't have to. I really don't want to. It feels just so like work. Let's and just, I don't let's want to just do go it. back to Gilmore Girls. <laughs> yeah, no, let's go back to Gilmore Girls. I'm I'm in I'm into that. Um and also we're gonna what are we gonna order? Uh I think we should get if you're if you know anything about Memphis, we're gonna get Huey's. Which is I don't even know how to describe it. It's just you're like a good old fashioned American restaurant. Yeah. But I just I would love a cheeseburger. Yeah. Gosh, that sounds so good. I'm so hungry. All right. Well, should we get into this week's episode topic? Sure. So this week's episode, uh, we decided, like we said earlier, to do more of a personal episode. And we decided that I'm just going to go, or I should say we're just going to go into motherhood. And I'm going to tell you guys my birth story and just just really get down and dirty in that mm. realm of life yeah currently <laughs> and you know we, we discussed like oh because like you know obviously I I want to talk we can't mm-hmm. talk about motherhood without talking about my infertility journey if you even want to call it that you're like, trying to conceive journey yeah because I mean I've technically conceived whatever um 
But we decided we're going to save that for another episode um, just because there is so much to cover. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I want to be clear too. Like I'm not weird about like hearing about motherhood or I'm not like I feel like people are like people have DM'd me and been like is it so like hard for you to hear about like Megan's birth story and like Megan's being a mom and like you know Megan's baby blah 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 no it's yeah. not it's not at all actually because it is so her journey and like yeah. Margo is so I don't know she's not just a baby do you know what I mean like, yeah she, she's Margo and it's just, she, it's just she's different. your niece and yeah. she's your family too yeah yeah. yeah, this is something that happened to our family. Yeah. And, like, it's not just me hearing about, like, or someone forcing, yeah. like, their, their like, motherhood opinion or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, just wanted to get that out of the way before <laughs> people just sit here, or people are just thinking that I'm sitting here uncomfortable, yeah. and I'm not. Yeah. So. Um, so, I guess let's kick it off with, should I kick it off with the birth story, or should I kick it off with just motherhood thoughts and feelings in general? whatever you want okay so I'll just I'll kick it off with some just some quick little motherhood a lot of common questions that I get asked and just my overall thoughts and feelings towards it okay so number one I think the biggest thing that I am very glad about with being a mother is that I did wait until I did Mm -hmm. and I so I had Margot when I was 30 and That was always my mental plan, kind of. For a while, I wasn't really sure. Like, I knew I wanted to be a mom, but I really wasn't sure when. And for me, it was one of those situations where I literally woke up one day and I was like, oh, I think I'm ready to have a baby. And that happens with a lot of women that I know. You Mm -hmm. go from not wanting a baby literally at all Mm -hmm. to it's like a light switch. You just all of a sudden want a baby. But also, I would love to talk about um, the women that – are like waiting for that moment yeah um like a lot I really struggled with that with Mm -hmm. coming to that moment of like I want to be a mother and um I recommend this book to like everybody oh I love this Um, book and I've I think it's helped a lot of people and it's helped definitely helped me but it's called The Baby Decision Mm -hmm. um we can put it in the show notes yeah Yeah. and we'll we'll post about it as well just in our stories and stuff but I think that like when you're talking about oh that moment where you're like your light just switched mm-hmm. and you were like I'm ready to have a baby um that moment comes sometimes like that where mm-hmm. it's like all of a sudden whatever but like for me I really had to like ask myself some really serious questions and yeah. like that book really like asks you them in a way that's super unbiased yeah um and it really helped me come to that conclusion that I did want to be a mother mm-hmm. um and also I will say something else that like really I think makes you want to be a mother is your life has to shift in Mm -hmm. a way that like that mindset will follow if you're like living in a city and none of your friends have kids Mm -hmm. and um you've never held a baby before in your life you know what I mean stuff like that like of course you're not gonna all of a sudden be like wow I'm supposed to be a mother and I want a baby I think that like your life will naturally shift that way or it won't yeah um I think that your life shifted that way it did um and my life did too Mm -hmm. so I think that's really important to note too like you you don't want to be sitting and that might happen at any age Mm -hmm. or it might not happen at all yeah that that shift and I think that's important to like remember that if you're waiting for that moment Mm -hmm. it might take some other things to kind of push that moment into existence and also don't let society shift or make you feel pressured because as we all know, society is full of lifetime lines and like shoulds of mm-hmm. when you should get married, when you should have a baby. Um, and I think a lot of women feel the pressure to have a baby sooner than like if they've been married for X amount of years, like, mm-hmm. oh, it's time to have a baby. It's like, no. Or just, if all your friends have babies yeah. or, or you're getting pressure from your parents or your in-laws or mm-hmm. whatever. It's truly between you and your partner. And yourself, yeah. too. Like, it's it's a really big conversation that you got to have with yourself. And but that, that book really forces you to yes. have that conversation, not only with yourself, but it also is with your partner. Like, mm-hmm. it opens up a conversation with your partner. So if you're <laughs> in that phase of life, definitely the baby decision was... Yeah. I, I listened to the audiobook of that, and it was like, 
very very eye-opening yeah (laughs) yeah really really helpful but anyways continue so yeah I was really glad that I waited because I felt at a point with my career where I had accomplished so much I was very very happy with that our marriage was at a good point we'd been married for a while I had a strong village surrounding me to help me raise this baby because Which was important to you very important and again to some women that might not be a thing but I always knew I wanted a lot of family around um to help because it's just better for me personally and I think it'll be better for Margot in the long run mm-hmm. so everything just the pieces kind of just fell into play mm-hmm. into place and I'm so happy with the way everything, the timing of everything worked out. I'm very thankful that our journey with Margo was very easy. Mm -hmm. Um, I truly had no idea what to expect. I mean, that's literally when you start trying to have a baby, you're quite literally jumping off a cliff. Mm -hmm. You do not know what is at the bottom. (laughs) That's what like sucks about trying to have a baby is... Oh, it's so beyond frustrating because you don't know if you're like going to get pregnant the first month you try. You don't know if it's going to take you a year. You don't know if it's going to take you five years. You don't know. Like you just don't know. And the only way to know Mm -hmm. is to try. Yeah. Which is like kind of insane. Yeah. So that's why you have to be fully ready because if it does happen on the first month, Mm -hmm. you got to be ready. Yeah. Like you're there. Yeah. You're there. It's happening. Yeah. You're there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So... Yeah, again, I'm very, very fortunate that our journey with Margot was very easy. I hear about a lot of stories with, you know, sometimes the second one is harder to have than the first one. And just because you had an easy time the first go around does not mean the second time will be easy. And also, I am two years older now, which that I know that sometimes Cross that bridge when you get to it yeah man. I'm, I'm yeah. telling you just like don't worry about it like when you sit coming <laughs> yeah from coming me, from you yeah <laughs> don't worry about like, it man <laughs> like, um you know. another question I get a lot is what do you what do you miss most about your past life before Margo and honestly the only thing and this is so stupid like it's so stupid the only thing I miss is I would have days where I would just rot I remember those days like I one thing about Megan Mace McKay (laughs) is she loves to rot yeah like I would just wake up and if it was like a rainy day I'd be like I don't think I'm gonna do anything today and again that is I was very fortunate that my life led me to have that even as an option so it's really stupid like I know that's really stupid but you would just the option to just lay around all day which is again that's really dumb no and you and wit were like a dangerous duo man yeah. when it came to rotting you guys yeah. would sleep in uh-huh. until you guys like are like yeah you guys are those people that sleep in which Margot is also a sleeper and I Thank swear God. that she is a sleeper because y'all are sleepers like it just genetically she was just like (laughs) I am destined to sleep but the two of you are insane people I'm sorry but you are (laughs) like you guys if we do a trip with them or anything like they would sleep in until 12 30 yeah like easy yeah like uh, that's insanity we like to sleep in and and I'm not saying because again I'm very fortunate with Margo she is a fantastic sleeper she goes to bed at eight o'clock at night and she wakes up between eight and nine in the morning Mm -hmm. so that's not a super early morning but we also put her down later than most babies her age because I did not want to be up at 7 (laughs) a.m because I like to sleep yeah so I'm getting you know I'm in bed by 10 between 10 and 11 I am asleep so I'm getting enough sleep I'm getting plenty of sleep it's Mm -hmm. just the option of sleeping in yeah that I really do miss but other than that I cannot imagine my life without her she is the light of my life she is so much fun (laughs) oh what's your favorite thing about being a mom Mm -hmm. I got this one recently and that is how every single phase gets more and more fun and I think you can relate to this Mm -hmm. because you think you know when they're just like a snuggly little newborn you're like oh my gosh this is bliss like you're in just pure bliss you're exhausted but it's pure bliss and then they smile and then they oh. laugh and then they start sitting up and then they start like interacting with you and then 
it's like now they have like she has like this little personality and it's just it's so fun Mm -hmm. like it's it really is so fun so I think that's my favorite part is just it's always evolving and it's always changing um and it just keeps getting better. It for does. Sure. It does. And that's what everybody says. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. Like, yeah. I feel that too. You know, she's not my baby. I want to be clear. But I feel like she is my baby sometimes. Because yeah. I've had the privilege to see her every day of her life. Yes. Uh, apart from like, I would say probably, I would say maybe 10 days. Yeah. Ha- that I've gone by without yeah. me seeing her. Which is like, that's such a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> She loves her auntie. Yeah. Uh, so another thing, what what was the most unexpected thing okay. about motherhood? And I think probably that right there is you just don't really know what to expect. But I think it's made me more of a relaxed person in the sense that you just, you're forced to kind of just let everything go. And it's, like, better for me as a person because I'm more of a type A person. And you just got to learn to go with the flow. And especially when you're taking her places, it's, like, it is what it is. And once you accept that, it's a lot easier to be a parent because you lose that layer of stress from having to everything be perfect. And I feel like there are people who, like, have a child who are, like, I am not going to change my life. Like, they're going to fit into mine, which that works for some people. But, like, you decided that that was not the Mm -mm. plan for you. You did quite the opposite, where you said, I'm ready and willing to change my entire existence to accommodate the baby. And I feel like that's a choice you have to make when having Mm -hmm. a child. Again, I'm not a mother, but I'm just saying, like, from what I've observed is you made the choice that this era of your life is not going to be the most, I can go wherever I want, whenever I want. It's Mm -hmm. not, we're going to take vacations. It's not, we're going to like go to all these restaurants and like whatever. You made that decision that you were going to surrender to the child. Yes. Which, I don't know. But I, but I, you see it all the time and, and people seem to be very happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just not what that's I... That's not what you chose and no. that's not how you decided to parent. And there's no right or wrong way no. to do that. I just personally, I, I, this time of my life and her life is so, so short and it's already proving to be... Like the first year of her life, I literally blinked and it was over. Mm-hmm. The newborn phase was like half a blink. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember it. Yeah. Like, because when you're in it, you're like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so, I'm so tired, you know, whatever. But looking back now, I'm literally like, that was so fast. It was like nothing. It was like a blip in time. Mm -hmm. So just having that already going by so fast, it's just, it's so fleeting. And I'm just really enjoying them being little. And there will be a time for me again in my life. But at this very moment, I am very content surrendering to my little Margot. Your boss. My boss. She's, that's, I joke all the time. I say, oh, my boss. I hope my boss is easy on me today. Yeah. (laughs) But I don't know. I think that that's, a nice way to look at it. I feel like a lot of people feel pressured Mm -hmm. to, um, you know, kind of not change their lives. Yeah. And I think that just for me, looking at how you have surrendered to it Mm -hmm. and like, and and the thing is, is like, ironically, by you surrendering to saying, this is not my season to travel. This is not my season to like, do whatever, to be available at all times or whatever. Like, by you doing that, it is in turn giving you control. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, because, yeah, it's like I've already made the decision. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I see it. And and it's it's nice to see that you're not stressed out, like, when someone invites you to something out of town. Yeah. And you're like, you're – you're not sitting there and being so upset and resenting the fact that you're a mother and, mm-hmm. or resenting the fact that you can't find anybody to watch her. You're just very much like, well, you know, this this time it wasn't going to work out. Yeah. When she's a little older, I will go do that. Yeah. And it's given you so much peace. I, and I have no, but again, that does have, have to do with, I, I'm really glad at the time of my life, 
the place and the time in my life when I did have her because I always knew that's how I wanted to parent. I wanted to be fully there and fully available to her and just know that it wasn't about me. And don't don't get me wrong in the sense of like, I still do things for myself. Nope, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just not traveling to Italy or yeah. going to Nashville whenever I want. Like, I, I leave the house. I do things. Like, I get my nails done every two weeks. I don't miss that. You know what I mean? Like... And I'm sure that if we were to sit down with someone who kind of did the opposite of what you did mm-hmm. and, you know, is like to, to travel a lot or whatever, I would actually love to know kind of the, the pros to that. Yeah. Because we're sitting here listening to the pros of the opposite of that. Yeah. I, which, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm sure it's probably like the baby is getting, you know, so much experience sleeping in different places. and Socialized. You know, socialized. Yeah. And, you know, you're you're still able to do all the things that you want while bringing like a new little like adventure yeah. buddy and like all that you know I'm sure like that's a great argument but I would be very interested to see like the pros and cons that'd be an interesting conversation to have with someone I think yeah I think it's just who you are as a person that and, too and what and I'm naturally just more of an introvert so it was just easier for me to introvert <laughs> yeah okay so should we go into my worst story sure I think sure okay so I had Margo at 39 weeks and four days. Um, I went into it not really knowing what to expect as far as I, I knew I did not want to be induced. Mm-hmm. And I ended up being induced. <laughs> you hear all these horror stories. Exactly. And that is why I am here to tell a positive induction story. We need it. We, I think that the, all the, the people trying yeah. to have a baby or pregnant right mm-hmm. now need to hear a positive birth story the internet is so full of negative ones yes it's it's so scary I know and and that's why I went into it so scared honestly Mm -hmm. because all I was seeing on my feed were all these negative birth stories and it's scary so I am here to put a positive one out for the internet that you can hold on to (laughs) so I went in for my 39 week appointment and my blood pressure had already been starting to creep up kind of the last week or so and I went to my 39 week appointment and it was just high like and she said okay listen just take it was on a Friday she said take the weekend really try and relax drink a lot of water if your blood pressure is not regulated by Monday like you're probably gonna get induced so that weekend we just kind of treated like it was going to be the last weekend and I went on a went in on Monday and sure enough my blood pressure was still high. I believe it was 140 over 95 it was which that bottom number that was oh, I'm not in the medical field. Yeah. It was that bottom number that was Well really 140 high. is not great either. No. It and it wasn't like dangerously high and my preeclampsia test had come back fine. So it wasn't preeclampsia, it was just hypertension could have gone yeah it was leading towards it yeah so we left the doctor's office and all the nurses and like the ultrasound tech were like so happy for you like go you know go have this baby and I'm like choking back tears because I was so scared because all I'd seen were these negative induction stories Mm -hmm. so we get in the car um or I got in the car and I just I was like freaking out, freaking out. And we got home and I was packing the rest of my hospital bag. Most of it was packed. And I just started sobbing because I was just so scared. And meanwhile, I'm texting Liz, like, gotta watch the dogs. You know, it's go time. Everything's going on. And I was just, I was so scared. So we get to the hospital. Um, she, she had told me in the doctor's office to go right to the hospital. And I was like, no, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I said, no, ma'am. I need to go home for a second and yeah. like take a chill beat. out. So yeah. I didn't tell her that. But um, so got our stuff, went to the hospital. We got there at about three. Uh, my nurse was like, okay, we're going to start the the Sciotech, which is what they put in your cervix first before they start you on Pitocin to dilate your cervix. And... I was like, can I please eat before? Mm-hmm. Because you never know how long an induction is going to take. And mm-hmm. you can't eat once they start you on an induction. And Megan, what <laughs> did you choose to eat? I had the best Pizza Hut 
meal of my entire life. Another thing about Megan Mace McKay is she is, it's her in the hut. I love Pizza Hut. That is by far superior. My favorite fast food pizza restaurant is Pizza Hut. So we ordered that. I shoved it down my gullet so fast. It was so good. I was so hungry. I got a picture of it. We should post it. Yeah, we should. Yeah. So, and then I started my Sciatec at five o'clock and it was moving really fast. The way Sciatec works, it was every four hours I got another dose. So after the first dose, I was dilated to two, which was a good sign. And then after the second dose, I was dilated to three and a half, four, which meant that they could stop the Sciatec and mm-hmm. move me to Pitocin. But I did get my epidural between, it, I can't, I think it was during the second dose of Sciatec <laughs> because I, you know, guys, like, listen, there are some women who I'm sure love the challenge of a natural childbirth, but that woman is not me. So I was like, as soon as I got slightly uncomfortable, I was just like, no need to be brave here. Let's just get the yeah. epidural. So I did that and then we just went to sleep for a little bit. I got the epidural at like two or three in the morning and oh my gosh, should I tell the epidural story? (laughs) Oh yeah. So the epidural, she had, it took two or three times for her to get it because apparently I have a strong back. (laughs) And let's be clear, um, you don't work out. No, I don't work out. She literally said, are you a dancer or something? And my husband is over on the other side of the room like almost in tears he's laughing so hard because Because you don't work out he knows I don't work out he knows I don't dance and I said um I cheered in high school (laughs) and (laughs) cheered when I say cheered it's it's sideline sideline cheer like we didn't do stunting like there's no there should be no residual muscle from sideline cheer no yeah so yeah apparently I had a strong back so it took her it was the third try she got it as soon as that epidural hit I was like peace I'm going to sleep So I went to sleep. I woke up to my doctor coming in the room at about seven and I had my sleep mask on. So like I literally woke woke up to somebody like, like kind of touching my knee and I like took my mask off. I was like, oh, like, oh my God. (laughs) Um, And she was like, hey, we're going to break your water. And literally she like went to break it and it broke. Oh, I feel like (laughs) I didn't didn't hear this part. Yeah. So she didn't have to break my water. Margo was like, I got it. Uh, Classic Margo, man. Like it just. I know. I know. So, and that was, yeah, again, that was like 7, 7.30 in the morning. And the plan was just to wait, wait out the Pitocin. And it did. And around noon, I was at 10 centimeters. So started the induction at 5 the night before. 12 noon, the next day, I was 10 centimeters, which was fantastic. That's like a dream. Truly a dream. Truly a dream. And also, keep in mind, the epidural was working great for me. I could move my legs, which some people can and some people can't, but I could. And uh, my nurse, who was so sweet, I we found out lives in my neighborhood. Yes, which like, I love. I know. I'm she obsessed. made my whole childbirth experience so great. She said, "Okay, well, she's still pretty far up, so I'm gonna let you labor down for thirty minutes, forty five minutes." So sat me up on the peanut ball and uh, labored down for thirty thirty minutes, I think. So I started pushing around. 12 30 and funny thing while I was pushing we realized that my nurse was a Megan and Liz fan (laughs) yeah so you're literally pushing out your child yeah and she says I used to watch your YouTube and I was like thank you (laughs) (laughs) you're like thanks girl and you're seeing everything (laughs) yeah and at that point like you just don't care and that's something else I want to stress it's like if you're worried about being modest like you literally don't care in the moment. I don't care at all. Um, so yeah, pushed her, pushed her out. She was born at one fifteen. pushed for 45 minutes. Um, it's so chill during, like, you're just kind of waiting for the contractions. My epidural did start to wear off on my right side a little bit, which I kind of liked because I could feel when I was when having a contraction and it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this hurts so bad. It just, it, it, it made it hurt, but it wasn't, yeah. I don't know. It, yeah. it was like a three out of 10. So that was kind of nice because I knew when to push like intuitively. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, she was born at 115, although she did come out with the cord wrapped around her neck, but was supposed to cut the cord. Um, but my doctor was super 
great about it. She was like, sorry, you can't do this. Uh, the cord's wrapped around her neck and unwrapped it. She started crying. It was all good. My husband did not realize. <laughs> this is the best <laughs> part of my the whole birth. My husband did not realize that babies, when they're born and they go through the birth canal, their heads are kind of point like pointed, not coned. I don't know, pointed. Yeah. Because they have to, their head has to fit through the birth canal. So that's he, why babies wear hats. Yeah. When they're first born. Yeah. So he was freaking out. <sighs> he thought that she was born with pinhead. Like, like something was wrong. Yeah. He, he was, he was like, oh my God, oh my God, something's wrong. He was like pacing around the room. And Did finally, he was like, why isn't anybody saying yeah, anything? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then so she went over, I think her APGAR, APGAR score was like an eight or a nine. So she was, she was great. They were just waiting for her to pink up a little bit. Wait, got to cut the rest of the umbilical cord off, which to be honest, I don't, don't really know if he enjoyed that or not. Based on the photos, he didn't, but... Yeah. Um, and then, meanwhile, while this is going on, Wit just has not updated anybody. Oh, yeah. Can I tell, can I tell <laughs> yeah. my story here? Okay, yeah. so we're all sitting in the waiting room, <laughs> like the lobby waiting room. And, okay, I, I was also panicking because, like, again, like you hear all these crazy stories about, you know, inductions going so bad and all this stuff. So I was... I was nervous. I yeah. was I was very very nervous and listen, I know that you wanted it to be you and your husband in the room and I respect that, <laughs> but it was hard for me. Yeah. It was hard. Like when when I had to leave that the at the like at the night at the night um when I had to leave the night before cuz I stayed after you had started everything. I stayed yeah. like as late as I could. Yeah. I stayed till like probably 11 o'clock yeah. or something. And then I went home and I cried on the way home Aww. because I was like so scared and just the uncertainty. Yeah, and I was just yeah. like I feel like I want to be there mm-hmm. if like she needs something or if she needs to be distracted or whatever and um so I was just like so scared and I was like worried about you and um so then the next day obviously like we're waiting we're all waiting it's like the whole family is waiting yeah and we get the last update we get was like oh she's pushing and then it had been a solid two hours (laughs) and and someone had told me recently that around two hours is like when they start pushing for a c-section yeah you know, two hour pushing mark is like a really big deal. And um, so it had been, it was right around two hours and we hadn't gotten an update. And then I was sitting there and I was like, they're wheeling her back to a C-section. And this you is, went there. Oh, I went there. I was like, I was like, it's been two hours. Like we haven't, we don't have an update. I was like, they're wheeling her back. I, I'm, I'm panicking. I was like, this is a totally different recovery than what we were expecting. Yeah. And I was like, uh, you're just freaking out, whatever. And so then I finally text with, <laughs> I text this man. I say, I need to know. I was like, yeah. wait, like, can we have an update? And he says, yeah, um, <laughs> she's just trying to latch. And Liz is like, oh, so so the baby's here. So not only is the baby <laughs> here, she's been here for a good solid, like, at least 20, 30, 20, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, great. <laughs> but that is, like, just so my husband. Oh, yeah, classic, 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 classic. Yeah, so. Oh, I forgot to mention that Sex in the City was on. While I was in the, the whole morning that I was, like, waiting to, like, finish dilating. And that's God. It was fantastic. Yeah. And, yeah, um, recovery wasn't too bad, honestly, I will say. Um, I did end up, and I don't want this to, like, scare anybody because, honestly, it, it sounds worse than it was. Mm-hmm. So my blood pressure went back up a couple days after I had Margo and I was home. So I did have to go back to the hospital for four days because, <laughs> yeah. Just casual four days. Yeah, you know? because I had to get like a magnesium drip to bring my blood pressure down and then they had to get my blood pressure medicines but apparently all right. But that's pretty common. Yeah, and a lot of the times they'll do the mag drip while you're laboring. Yeah. Like, like I think they probably could have done that. Yeah, the, the two girls that I know of that happening to, that's what they did. Uh-huh. Um, but honestly, it, again, that sounds way worse than it was because everything was fine. Like the mag drip, all it did is just made me really tired. So mm-hmm. yeah. Did I want to be back in the hospital? No. Like, did I want to be home? Absolutely. It was honestly kind of nice though. Yeah. Cause like, 
it was just nice because we didn't know what we were doing with the baby. Yeah. And like, yeah. I say we, but like, you know, I was there for the first few nights mm-hmm. just with Margo um, trying to help y'all or like just there if you needed yeah. like an extra hand like throughout the night whatever so it was nice to go back to to the hospital where you could ask a question about the baby yes. to, to your nurse yeah and she could tell you yes that's fine yeah or Don't and the nurse it. was like coming in yeah like every couple hours whatever mm-hmm. so it just felt like a nice like extra kind of like security security blanket, blanket yeah. of like if anything goes wrong it's like yeah. we're, we're in the hospital like, yeah yeah so yeah like obviously the worst part of it all was I just wanted to be home at that point yeah but uh, the whole hospitalization in general wasn't bad. So yeah, that happened. And then as far as like recovery, like down there, I'll keep it real. I had a second de- degree tear, which I feel like is the tell most the people, common. Tell the people what this is. Yeah. Like yeah. this is, this is important. Yeah. So there's first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree. And I feel like second degree tears is the most common that I hear with childbirth. So uh, the recovery really, it was... It was uncomfortable, but, you know, I I took ibuprofen and it was fine. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't really sit certain ways. It was fine. Um, And it was, it healed pretty quick. Yeah. And, like, I was up walking around. I was walking up and down stairs. But I did have to, I was going up and down my stairs too much because I called my doctor and I said, I think, I feel like I tore a stitch. And she was like, well, why? And I was like, because I feel like a pulling on one side and she was like oh well people always think that you tear directly down she's like but you probably tore to the left or more to the right and once she clarified that I was like oh duh like Mm -hmm. that makes sense so it was just the actual tear that I was feeling so if you if any of you out there are like about to have a baby if that's what you feel you don't tear I mean you can tear perfectly vertical but but odds are you're not odds are you're not so yeah after after that no I just kept taking some ibuprofen and I, like again it really wasn't a bad recovery you had a really awesome birth overall I did and like it's I think that you know I think that's important to share too yes, yes. and and you're not negating yeah the trauma that a lot of women go through like yeah. with negative births yeah but like I think it's important to share that it is possible yeah very possible to have a very normal birth and even to the women who did have traumatic births it's like your second one might not be, you know, mm-hmm. it's very, very possible to have a good birth. And I'm very, very thankful that I did. So yeah, I'm very interested to see whenever we decide to have a second child, we were just talking about this earlier, what they're going to do for my blood pressure. Mm-hmm. If anybody has any insight, I would love to know because I was formally diagnosed with postpartum preeclampsia. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they're going to start me on aspirin. I don't know if they're going to induce me at like 38 weeks, if they're going to just put me on blood pressure medicine. I don't know. Would love mm-hmm. to hear any experiences that anybody has with that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I can contribute. <laughs> Let's bring, make it all about me. Hey, I um, told you. I was like, this episode feels very me heavy. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I, but I feel like – um I will say also right after she was born, I had this like weird experience where it was like, yes, I cared about the baby, but I was like way more concerned about you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you didn't know Margo. No. Which yeah. is like a crazy thing to look back at now because yeah. like she is the light of my life. <laughs> but like it was just so funny because like it truly is this baby that you don't know. Yeah. Like, it's so weird. Yeah. Like, we kind of knew her because, like, you've been pregnant with her and, like, you can feel her moving and stuff, but... No, it's weird. It's a really interesting... Like, I remember when I first went up to go see you after you'd given birth, I was like, yeah, I want to meet the baby, but, like, mostly I just, like, want to, like, yeah. see you and, like, check up on you and, like, see how... If you're okay and, like, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, so that was a really interesting experience. Also, I'm so mad because when I say I know that I filmed Liz walking in and meeting Margot, like I had my phone up. I saw you filming I hit, me. I, I don't know what happened to the video. I don't know if I thought I hit record, but then that wouldn't make sense because I would have hit re- like I would have had to stop it too. Yeah. That video just got like sucked into the void. I don't yeah. know where it is and I'm really upset about it because it was really sweet and it was really special and I wish I still had it. But 
Did you look in like your deleted photos? Oh yeah. I've checked everywhere. You have? Yeah. Unless maybe I get on the laptop and look at like the cloud itself. Oh, but ugh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still really bummed about that. That's okay. Yeah. We have yeah. a lifetime of memories together. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to say about no. your birth story? I think all I can say to you people, you people out there who are pregnant, um, who want to be a mother one day, um, it really is the best thing in the world. And I know everybody says that. And I'm not going to say it's hard, but it's the best thing. Because all I heard before I had Margo was it's hard. And that like scared me, mm-hmm. to be quite honest. So I'm not going to say it's hard because it's just the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Like, yeah. Is, is it... It's not like a walk in the park, but I mean... Nothing in life is a walk in the park. Nothing is a walk in the park. Like, yeah. truly, like, think of something that is, like, easy in your life. Yeah. Like, besides, like, getting drunk or something. But, yeah. like, even, like, getting drunk kind of sucks. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Because you got to deal with the hangover. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like there's there's nothing really in life that, like... Just, like, all things in life that are worth having, mm-hmm. you have to work to enjoy it you could even you could even compare it to like traveling i'm just thinking about yeah. okay, i'm just thinking yeah, about yeah, yeah. these people like myself included honestly who like when i was thinking about not having a child yeah and i was like what would my life look like if i like and this is a question in the book too oh, yeah. that um but whatever um you know if you're traveling to europe and you're single mm-hmm. and whatever like odds are you're not gonna have a perfect flight no. there you're not gonna like like it's gonna suck adjusting to the time, new time zone. zone yeah like odds are your your airbnb isn't gonna be exactly what you thought it was gonna be and you know you're gonna have to pay an extra 50 dollars because your bag was heavier do you know what i mean like you're always gonna come across these like crazy mm-hmm. things that you're not expecting that suck yeah but then like if you're if i'm still using the travel analogy but at the end of the day like, yeah, all of those things happen, but then you're getting that high of like, I'm in Europe yeah. and I'm eating at this restaurant I've always wanted to eat at. And yep. I'm, and you're getting those like really big moments. Like that's kind of the same for parenthood, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's, you have to look at the big picture of it all. And that's, that's also in that book. It's like, who do you see at your dinner table when mm-hmm. you're 60 years old, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I saw children. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I just, again, I just really hated when people would say like, it's hard, but it's worth it because like, it just sounds, again, all I heard was hard, but Mm -hmm. it's truly the best thing in the entire world. And then also like that book says, um, this is probably the biggest thing that like really like changed my mind about Mm -hmm. parenthood is your life with or without children is going to have things that are going to happen that are going to change who you are Mm -hmm. with or without children yeah like no matter what you can't you by not having children it doesn't protect you Mm -hmm. from like experiencing really hard things yeah or experiencing things that are like detrimental to you Mm -hmm. and like whatever you know what I mean if and for me my biggest like fear of having a child was I was so scared of like what would happen and like Mm -hmm. if it was hard you know would I be able to handle it and all this stuff but that's not the way that life is yeah with without children yeah because things are gonna happen yeah that are gonna challenge you just as much as having a child will whether that be health job yes moving yeah yeah love it's always gonna be something it's always gonna be something and Mm -hmm. so and that kind of made me think especially after you having Margot, Mm -hmm. I also didn't realize that the baby and the child gives you back so much more than than you realize. Yeah. It's so rewarding. Yeah. I didn't, I had never experienced that before with any child because I had never been around a baby long enough. I had never changed a diaper until my own daughters. Let me, let me start or let me end that too. It's like, you don't have to be like, spent your whole life hanging out with babies Mm -hmm. and babysitting Mm -hmm. I never babysat never changed a diaper probably held a baby like three times in my life and it it just comes naturally once your baby's here yeah and it's completely different when it's your child versus somebody else's too yeah it's completely different 
Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that I just, I didn't realize that mm-hmm. like, unless you're an auntie, then you probably have a good yeah. sense of what it's like. <laughs> but I see it with you. you yeah. Mean, I, I do feel it with me, even mm-hmm. though she's not my child, but I see it with you too, that like that what she gives you back yeah. is just so much more than I, I never considered yeah. that. I Or maybe I didn't know what it was, but I didn't know that a child could give you back so much. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, obviously when they're a newborn, it takes, cause they're but not, when they're a newborn. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's the weirdest thing that, yeah. I don't know. I just never really took into consideration. Again, it, it's something that you don't really know. I'm sure until, you become an aunt or you become a mom mm-hmm. because because you think that children yeah. are this like thing that holds you back yeah. and you know this thing of like oh I'm never gonna be alone again or I'm I can't do this or I can't do that and I can't I won't be able to do this and it's kind of like this really restrictive yeah. kind of mindset that I think a lot of parents also project yeah on you know mm-hmm. um but if you look at it kind of the opposite way, it's not it's not restrictive. It's completely opening your world. It is. Like, it is completely opening up every single moment to, like, something that you did you would not have seen mm-hmm. unless you saw it through their eyes. Yeah, seeing... I'm like, are you crying? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know. It's like, ooh. Like, seeing the world through her eyes for the first time is, like, one of the most magical things ooh, I've ever experienced in my life. Okay, can we talk about something? <laughs> no, but like me too. And yeah. it's not even she's not even my baby, but like that's the lesson that I think we needed to learn and like yeah. that's what children like teach you is like truly they teach you to slow down and they teach you to like look at the world a completely different way. Yeah. Like and I know people say that all the time, but you don't I didn't understand that yeah. until it happened. Yeah. And that's something that's really not talked about. Yeah. Enough. I think it's so we're gonna talk about it so we're gonna talk about it (laughs) all right well now that we're crying yeah now that we're crying (laughs) oh we just love her we do (laughs) we all she's so loved I know I'm like (gasps) literally like let's go I just want to give her a hug is she napping still no I think she's probably awake by now she was napping (laughs) well we can eat our Hueys and snuggle Margot and that's the other thing too it's like all those memes that are like oh you you get them down to sleep and you just look at pictures and videos. I'm like, that's so true. I do that every single night. And I just like watch her on her little Nanit monitor. And I'm just like, oh, I love her so much. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I have access to the Nanit. So. <laughs> Anti-privileges. I, yeah, I do that sometimes. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm missing her, I just look at the Nanit. Well, guys. Our first personal episode. Yeah, so as always, just... This one was differently formatted than the first two. So we love the feedback. Um, go and follow us on at Noted with Megan and Liz mm-hmm. on Instagram because we post all the podcast things on there. Um, yeah. and I Thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you for listening. And thank you for just giving the response that you guys have given to this podcast. It's just yeah. way beyond our expectations. And we're very thankful. And we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, we are. So, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll talk to you later. See you next week. Bye. Bye.